So we hear it at Dell, and uh, you are launching this, right? Yes, we are. Yes. So, so what do you call this? So this is currently called Project Ophelia. It's a project name. It's a product that will be available in the first half of this year. Um, and it's a product that turns any capable display, or so a TV or a display, into a, an access device for either your corporate or your corporate information and applications or your personal information applications. Nice. So basically this is an Android computer, right? Yes, this is a, it's a, it, it's a computer. Uh, it has a, it's a connector that will go into an MHL or a HDMI port on the display. It can charge from MHL. It can. It can. It, this has no battery in it, yeah. so it takes its power from the display. It uses about two watts of power. Uh, so it will either take its power from the MHL, or if you've got uh, HDMI, then it, it will take its power from a USB on the on the display device. Nice. So uh, MHL compliant, MHL support. Yes. And, uh, what else do you have there? This is the USB power? So, so that's if we have to take USB power. Uh, we also, on the other side, we have a, a micro SD uh, slot for uh, adding additional storage onto the device um, and a push to connect uh, a button here for, uh, for wi easy Wi Fi connectivity. Push to connect, Where, where's the push? What does that uh, the mean? little push to connect button down at the end. So, a lot of routers now have uh, the ability to, you push a button on the router, you push a button on the device and, and it will connect uh, without having to remember passwords or anything like that. And uh, so what is this light? Is it for power? Uh, so that's, that's just indicates that when the, when the device is powered. And micro SD? And micro SD, yeah. So, no, no. Is, it, is, is it final or is it still in development? Uh, so we've still got, uh, still got more work. We're still, um, we have it in beta at the moment. Uh, still got more work to do in terms of bringing it to market. So how does this fit in with Dell? Why did Dell suddenly do this? So, so Dell is a, um, there's really two, di two different areas. Um, Dell is, is typically set into the enterprise, uh, but Dell has changed and is continuing to change over, over the years much towards, towards a, an end-to-end -end solutions company. So we will work with customers um, to, to help them identify um, how they can develop their IT to, to make, the, make the organization more competitive, to move it forward. We, will, we then have the, the hardware, software and services to help them build the infrastructure. And then with the acquisition of WISE last year, um, we, we really have a very strong um, uh, product offering uh, down in the client devices. So this adds to that. Um, now, in terms of... What is WISE? What so, did WISE do? So WISE, uh, WISE was a, a 30-year-old company um, that uh, uh, was acquired by Dell uh, in May last year. Uh, so WISE uh, was market leader in uh, thin client uh, technology, really what we call cloud client technology, which is the hardware and software uh, about how you access your, your data and applications in the cloud. So WISE was market leader in that space. Uh, it was acquired by Dell. Um, and, that, and the WISE technology is now part of a division within Dell called Cloud Client Computing. And what this uh, helps organizations do is really understand how they can take advantage of, um, of uh, alternate computing. Uh, so um, we have a lot of organizations uh, looking to, to refresh PCs. Um, if they, what we're saying is move the data and the applications into the data center, get a much more scalable, secure infrastructure that enables organizations to move. So, so that's what cloud cloud computing does, and the WISE portfolio, the software and the hardware is all part of that. Does that in any way hint at the possibility that Dell is going to make PCs like this for consumers? Uh, well, it's all right, Dell is a Dell, Dell is a it delivers solutions for the enterprise market. But here at uh, at Mobile World Congress, we're very interested in talking to to service providers who could well take a device like this 
and uh, and then create cr create a create a consumer offering. Maybe with a maybe with with airtime, with uh, maybe with applications as a service, desktop as a service. So it, th this technology can be built into a into a very good offer by a service provider. Because it runs Android right now, but Android is kind of optimized for tablets and smartphones, right? So what you need is software that kind of makes it. Gives it shoes that the so, that you want to have. So, so Android Android gives us a platform that enables us to, to as we say, turn a turn a big display into a uh, uh, in, into an access device. Uh, it's, it's very it's a very strong platform. Um, yes, we'll have some uh, some software that that really enables it to take advantage of the uh, of uh, the full capabilities. There are some really nice uh, features with with MHL. You can actually control the device from the display, so you could start to maybe, if you wanted to to go through uh, photos or, or or play video, you could be able to control that from the remote control of the TV set rather than having to do it from a mouse or a keyboard. And what you're looking for is maybe software partners like Canonical or uh, Google. Chrome OS, or it could even run so, Windows 8. So we have uh, very good relationships with, with Google. We also have a very talented uh, software development team within Dell. Uh, Dell, Dell has uh, really got some strength in software now. That uh, I think ma many people don't realise that the the strength of the, of the teams within Dell. So we have a lot of capabilities, both the the team that was acquired as part of Wise, but also the Dell Software Group. So you can actually make this uh, totally useful for all users, oh, uh, enterprise and consumers and everybody. Absolutely. You can. Uh, yeah. Uh, so our, fo our focus is really on, on enterprise today. As I said, we, we see the consumer market being more, more addressed by the, uh, um, by, by the uh, by service providers. Uh, but it certainly has a, a, a um, it, it, it has a, is a solution that has capabilities in both markets. Cool. So I'm going to go check out the. Do you have a do you have another differentiator? So, so I think the, the really important thing is, is this is part of a solution um, and uh, particularly if these devices, whether they're in consumer device or an enterprise device, uh, the device has to be managed. Uh, has to be managed in order to enable new services, in order to secure the device. Uh, if somebody loses this, they want, they want to know that the device can be, uh, can be locked or disabled. So the um, so we have a product called Dell Cloud Client Manager that enables us to uh, manage uh, Android and iOS devices uh, from the cloud. Uh, so this is a software as a service offering. It's available today, uh, and and what this does is is really turns this into a con complete solution, so that you um, you don't have to worry about the, the security of your device. Uh, your device can be made can be made uh, functional uh, really easily, either from the enterprise or, or as a service to consumers. How does that look like? Is that web-based or what is it? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's web-based. It's a single pane of glass that allows organizations to, to manage uh, their mobile devices. And we're also using the same technology to, to manage some of our thin client devices as well. It will manage it from a device perspective. So you could say, I want to upgrade all these devices. Um, it also manages it from the user perspective, because certainly in the enterprise, a user may, may have three, four, five different devices. Uh, if, if that user um, maybe leaves the organization, you want to one click to be able to deactivate all the devices and remove them from the network. Uh, so uh, Cloud Client Manager does all of that. Nice. So every one of these sticks has a name, like stick one, stick two, stick three. What do you call them? Uh... Uh, affiliate one, affiliate two, affiliate three, and you just go click and say, uh, put this there, and that's so, it. it just happens. So, so the way the cloud client manager does it is, um, you you give the credentials to the, you you enroll the user in the system, and then that if that user. Uh, was on this device and logged in using their credentials on this device, then this device then gets associated to that user. Uh, so, so that's the way that uh, we, we take lots of devices and tie them back to, to what they, they should have access to. And you're doing a lot of work in that? Or is uh, all working already? The, there's uh, a cloud, cloud, cloud Cloud Manager is already in the market. Uh, it's an offering today. But uh, Device Manager is, is, a, is a big area. 
um, there's lots of uh, future potential uh, in terms of, of different, both cloud-based and on-premise-based uh, device management solutions. So do you consider this as like part of the Internet of Things on the at the home? Like you connect more, connect the TV and connect the... They, they, um, the, the, the part of Dell that, that I'm part of, um, we're a division called Cloud Plant Computing, uh, and we have a, uh, um, we have a, a very simple present uh, a, a proposition. Uh, we talk about any user, any application, any device. Uh, so particularly, uh, as over the past few years, we've seen a real explosion in the number of devices that users carry. It's really important for us to be able to to provision those, to manage them, to secure them. Um, and Project Ophelia is another part of, of that uh, end-to-end -end solution offering. So in any case, so, 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 here you're showing Pocket Cloud. Yeah, so, How does that work? Yeah, so Pocket Cloud is um, applications for iOS, Android, the web, PC, and, and Mac that lets you turn all of your mobile devices and your cloud storage into a personal cloud. So search, view, organize, and share all of your files from anywhere using your mobile devices. So as an example, we have Pocket Cloud Remote Desktop. Pocket Cloud Remote Desktop lets you run your PC or your Mac as if you're sitting in front of it. So edit Office documents, share them, um, run RDP, VNC protocols. It's a pure remote desktop application. But now we're in a transition with the Pocket Cloud family to more of the personal cloud. So here we have an example of Pocket Cloud Web. On the left-hand side, I see all my computers that are in my personal cloud. On the upper corner, I have the, I have the files that I've shared on my cloud storage, and these are the lists. So in this case, instead of looking at my desktop view as Remote Desktop does, and lets me see my desktop, it lets me see all my files in native format. So in this case, I can search for files across, I can share them, I can put them on the public cloud. One of the key features here is that in order to share files, I don't necessarily have to sync everything to the public cloud. For example, with Dropbox, you have to sync everything, then you can share. So in the case of Pocket Cloud, I can share a file with you. Let's say I have a video at home that I want you to see. I can just send you a link to it. It goes to my computer and gets it. So that's the idea of the personal cloud is you have terabytes of storage, keep the files where you want them to be, and then share where you want to put, put them on the public cloud. Run your applications and share. So you can have terabytes of storage by using your own home storage. And turn it into your personal cloud, yes. So you don't have to, you don't have to buy storage from any of the big players, although you can use that. Because if you want a terabyte from Google, I think it costs $1,800 for three years. Or something. That's right. That, that's what the codes companies want you to do, is they give you five or 10 or whatever gigabytes free, and then they hopefully, after you get to 100 or 200 gigs, you start paying. So in our case, you can use that storage or our cloud storage, but why not use all the storage that you have automatically? So just buy a hard drive connected to what? Connected to your PC or, a NAS, or any sort of a NAS drive. So kind of like uh, any PC? That's right. So here on the left-hand side, um, your, the computers that you have online, these two happen to be offline right now. The network here is kind of flaky, but all your PCs show up. So you can tap in, you can find, find all the files that you've exposed on that computer, share them, organize them, edit them. All right, so is this released? Pocket Cloud has been out since 2009 um, in the remote desktop form, and most recently released, released Pocket Cloud Web that we're showing here. We also, um, a couple months ago, released Pocket Cloud Explorer, which is for Windows RT devices. So the same idea, I can tap into that computer I have at home with my Windows RT tablet, like the XPS 10, and share, bring that down to my PC here or share it with you, view it, print it, or anything. So what, what do you say since 2009, what was that? In 2009, we first introduced Pocket Cloud Remote Desktop, and that was initially for the iPhone. We then um, expanded that to support for the iPad, the full native support, and then later Android, and now Windows RT, and also the web. All right. So, what is the pricing? How does that work? Well, Pocket Cloud comes in sort of two forms. There's a free version that you can get has fully functional, but there's extra capabilities in Pocket Cloud Remote Desktop Pro for $15 US. And there's also a subscription version of the Pro of the um, personal cloud. So for about $3 a month, you get um, additional features like 10 gigabytes of cloud storage instead of two gigabytes, access to more computers in your personal cloud, additional features, for example, streaming of um, uh, larger file sizes, bigger file size uploads. So all this information is available at www.pocketcloud.com where it shows the pro version, the free version, and what you get for the premium version.